Hey. Hey. What's going on? My name's Taryn. And I'm Tate. And this is Plant That Sis Podcast. All right, guys. How are you? How's it going? Tate, how are you? Um, I'm okay. I'm good. How are you? Yeah. I'm also okay, but <laughs> happy to be recording. <laughs> Me too. Happy to be here for sure. Apologies for our little one week hiatus. We had some technical difficulties. Yeah. Uh, AKA the piece of crap mic that I bought crapped out. So had to get a new mic. And of course, that was a process. Because I didn't want to make the same mistake I did the first time in the mic. So we're back at it. Back at it again. We are here. Ready to go. Yep. We're so excited to get talking about this topic. For today's episode, we are doing a tribute to the queens who tell us what they want or are just demanding and needy. With the demanding and needy, though, comes the beauty. So we're it's here true. to just talk our love-hate relationship with all these different kinds of plants who are opposite of what I feel like we've talked about in most of our episodes thus far, which is easy, doable, hardy, the bitches that bounce back. Today yep. is about the divas, the not-so-bounce-back, not-so-hardy. Gotta put a little work in. Yeah, they make you work or for mostly. it, which... It's pretty fun. Let's be honest. We all love a little bit of drama. Even if you say you don't, you like a little drama. I feel like there's that part of all of us. You know, we all even even. Yeah, like you said, even if we don't admit it publicly, like there's a little fun to some drama. Drama and that's not like ruining your life, of course. I was going to say, like, what better drama than plant drama where it's, you know, so low stakes. Literally the best drama. All right. So jumping right in with the divas, we're starting off with the high maintenance ladies. And what else would we start off with than the Calathea or Calathea or Calalalalala? So there's lots of different ways you can say that. I like to say Calathea. That just sounds nicer than Calathea. I like Calathea. So that's how we're going to say it. Props to you and we support you saying it however you feel like saying it. So what else would we start with for the divas than a Calathea? These plants are gorgeous. I always, 100% of the time, consistently love them <laughs> and fall into their trap all the time. They're so pretty. They're I always, always see pretty. Them and I always talk myself out of it. <laughs> You're I'm smarter like, than no. me. I have moments. I have strong moments, and then sometimes I'm just a sucker and I can't help myself. So there's tons of different kinds of Calatheas. Obviously, it's a family. I'm sure there's a more scientific way to say this. Tate, you could correct me, but it's a family of plants. So there's lots of different kinds. And something that it's usually referred to as sort of, it's sort of synonymous with prayer plants. Uh, the reason they're called prayer plants is because they at night fold up, kind of like they're going into a prayer position. And then during the day, they fold back down and open oh. up. My God, I didn't know that, Taryn. Really? I did not know that. And that Are explains you serious? So much. I literally did not know that. And I've been wondering why my rattlesnake Calathea has been doing that. I'm like, am I killing it? Is it dying? What's it doing? Oh, I, <laughs> I literally did not know that. Cool. Girl. Wow, that's... She's just praying. She's Aww. just praying. So, yeah. Wow, I can't believe I just educated you yeah, unexpectedly. You, you that's blew funny. my mind. I've literally seen it happen. And I thought I did something wrong. Like, I thought I was killing it. It's funny you say that because I've been looking for it in the Stromanthi Trio Star, which I'm not sure exactly where some of these are all related. And we're going to talk about a couple different kinds. But I've been looking for mine to do that. And it, it kind of does it, but not as dramatically as I've seen some videos, which might be because it's not doing well <laughs> in general in my care. Mine's doing okay. And... uh well, okay, it's doing it's doing good. She's popping out two new leaves right now. You know how they come up as like rolled up and mm -hmm. then they open up. She has two coming out. I'm so excited. But <sighs> I don't really notice feeling. her praying. Like she stays pretty much the same. But the rattlesnake Calathea that I have does it all the time, like, like every day. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's active. Some of the Calatheas I've had in the past. The first one I got was a Calathea Freddy, 
And essentially, that's a. I got a small one. Most of the plants I get, I will say, start small because I'm cheap. And this was, I want to say, maybe May when I got this plant. Uh, didn't do much research. Shocking. Just got it. Thought it was pretty. It did really well for a hot minute. <laughs> I had it in our bedroom, which gets morning light. So it's an east-facing window, and there's four big windows in there. So it's pretty good a pretty good room for light. And they typically don't like a ton of light. They don't like direct light. They don't need a whole bunch of light, like I just said. So I had it pulled pretty far back from the window and it was doing really good for a while. After I'd had it for a little bit, I looked it up, you know, to see how to take care of it and was like, oh, this says that it's a tricky plant to take care of. Well, (laughs) I must be doing great. Like I felt all confident in myself. And... At this rate, I really should just take a picture and post it for you guys to see because it is barely hanging on. Oh, she's barely there. She's barely there. I don't even know really what the decline was, but I once it started declining, I started kind of moving it around to see if maybe the lighting was the issue or maybe it's kind of by where our bathroom door is. So I didn't know if maybe with the doors opening and closing because like we said, these queens are sensitive They don't like to be messed with. They don't like their conditions changing a lot from what I understand. So I thought maybe that was part of it. So I started kind of trying to move it around, which, again, changing its environment a lot did not help. And it just really declined. Right now I have it. There's been multiple times where I've gone to just get like throw it away and retire it and just say, you know what? It's it's not going to happen. But I still have it. Like I said, it's barely hanging on. I believe calatheas are the type of plant that you can cut back, like just cut all the leaves off. And if you kind of take care of it, it'll keep growing. So in my head, I've talked to myself about doing that, but I just haven't gotten around to it, honestly. And now I have it in my front room, which is south facing, is a south facing window and it's a big window, but it's just the one. And I have it kind of tucked under a bunch of other stuff so it doesn't get a ton of light at all. Probably even less light than I got before. Um, And when I water it, I can tell it it kind of perks up a little bit. So, I mean, I'm hanging on to it, but it's not going great. Do you think it's a humidity thing? Absolutely. That is the number one thing that calatheas need is humidity. That's, they're one of those, which if you've listened to episodes in the past, you know that that's a problem for me personally. And for some reason, I just have a hard time biting the bullet and purchasing a humidifier. I don't know why. It's just a mental thing and I'm a stubborn person. So it just hasn't happened. You are pretty stubborn. Yeah, I've accepted it at this point. I've, I'm i working through it, but it's just not an investment I've made. You know how it goes. There's only so much money to spend, and you spend the money on the things you want to spend the money on, which ends up being more plants that are hardier for me a lot of the time than yeah things to take care of the diva plants because they make me mad. But again, these plants are gorgeous. They have the most looks like hand painted leaves and the most they're so beautiful so many different colors and varieties they're just so pretty so the calathea freddy is where i started the next one i got i guess so i realized with my experience with that one that these are not going to go well i feel like i maybe had one other one at some point i will say the really really common ones like the medallion i think it's called and there might be one other that are really common i haven't gotten those i just haven't come across them really so the freddy's where i started and then the next one i got was months and months later at some point kind of towards the end of the summer I got suckered in. I fell right into the (laughs) trap of the Calathea White Fusion, which if you guys haven't seen it, and if you're not, I don't know, driving or something, you should Google it. It's gorgeous. It is so pretty. It's like white and it's lavender and green. It is such a pretty plant. Um, But I ordered it online. This plant arrived in not the best condition compared to most of the times that I've ordered plants through the mail. I've had pretty good experiences, so... It came in the mail. It looked a little rough, which, again, we know they're divas. It was to be expected. And as soon as I opened the box, I was like, what the hell am I doing? Who? Just who do I think I am right now with this Calathea White Fusion? Because I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe it might even be a hybrid of some sort, but it's extra picky. So the family of Calathea plants are picky, but this one is I mean, above and beyond Diva. And I just didn't, I again, I fell into the trap. I was hypnotized by the leaves. 
I was like, I'm just going to do it. Maybe by this point, because again, this was months and months later, I was like, I could probably handle it now. I think I could do it. As soon as I opened the box, I was like, girl, what? what is this? I know this is not going to go well. Um, and I guarantee it was absolutely dead flat in two weeks time. This is your white fusion, right? My white fusion. Yes. Oh man. They're so pretty. Though. They're so pretty. So RIP to that one. So yeah, I guess all of these like humidity. So yes. if you live somewhere where it's just humid all the time, you know, we live in, we don't live in South Texas or like by the coast where it is really humid. Uh, but if you live somewhere humid, they might be fine. Or if you're like me and you just have a green thumb for some reason, don't really know why. I have two uh, two Calatheas. I have a Trio Star and a Rattlesnake Calathea, and both of them are doing actually pretty good. And I honestly, I haven't repotted them because I've been too scared to repot them. Because I feel like whatever they're in right now, they're obviously really like. And I have no idea what potting medium that they're in from when we got them, Taryn. Mm-hmm. So I've just left them in their thing, and they are doing really well in my bathroom. It's honestly annoying. I don't know what the secret is. I don't. I don't know. I just when when the soil is a little dry, just water it. I don't over. I don't water it too much. Like I never water it to where it's like water's coming oh, out of the bottom. I, see. I know a lot. See, I see online a lot of tips about watering, about how you're supposed to like water it fully, like let it water run through and then let it dry out completely. And that's true for a lot of plants. But with my Calatheas, I don't really do that because I, I don't think they like being super wet, but they just like being a little moist. So I just give them like a little bit of water. Well, and they definitely do not like to dry out. I know that that will immediately, if you're not already getting some brown yeah. tips from the air not being humid enough, if you let it dry out for even just a second too long, you'll get drop like eight leaves. They'll turn brown and crispy and fall off immediately. Or they won't fall off. You kind of got to yeah. rip them off and they don't come off very easily, but... You lose leaves really fast, so they definitely do not like being dried out like you were saying a lot of plants do. So that's in- I'm glad you said that because I wasn't really thinking about that, and I know that they have a more delicate root system, so it's probably good that you're leaving them in their original situation. I know, but then I'm like, but they're getting bigger, and I need to repot them. A bit. Like, my trio oh, star is popping out. are they getting out. bigger? <laughs> Is that the problem you're having, that your calatheas are just getting Guys, bigger? my calatheas are just growing too much. <laughs> I know it's a good problem to have. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm happy. I guess my bathroom gets really humid and like <laughs> swampy or something. Maybe they like that. I don't know. Yeah, they love it. But yeah, I don't ever let them get dry. I just keep them. I try to keep them like a moist, not too wet, but just a little just damp. Just a little sip here and there. Yeah, literally. Yeah, honestly, it's what I do. And I waited a little bit longer to water my Trio Star. So some of the leaves are browning a little, but it's looking good after I watered it. It's perked back up it's looking fine so that's my secret i don't know yeah tate and i were kind of talking just briefly through the episode before we started it because again we talked about this what two weeks ago now maybe even longer and with the microphone issues and all that we haven't talked about it so we're kind of talking through it and she was like you know what taryn i think i just have a green thumb i was like oh my god (laughs) i'm gonna punch you in the face oh we know you inherited the green thumb and i didn't we know I honestly, it hit me with with the trio star when I saw the two leaves pop up and I realized like I really don't even do much to it. Like I just leave it in my bathroom. I water it when it feels a little dry. I don't really do much and it's growing. And like I and then and then it was like an epiphany in that moment. I was like, I don't even really it just comes to me naturally. I don't really know how to explain it. Like I just feel like I know when to water them or something. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I hope this doesn't come across like I'm so conceited, but no, I was no. like, man, maybe I did inherit maybe I inherited Grammy's uh green thumb. You one hundred percent inherited <laughs> that side of the family. And it's funny because really I typically inherit that side of the family's genes more. Like I am look exactly like my dad, who looked exactly like Grammy. And so I'm just a little bit salty because that's this. I got the short jeans. I got the, you know, short tempered <laughs> jeans. I got all of those jeans, but no green thumb. And I just feel like that's a little bit of a ripoff. Hey, you know what you didn't get? What? You didn't get cataracts at 21. Oh, you're right. That's the gene you did not get. So at least True. you don't have to go get cataract surgery when you were 23. <laughs> at least you don't have to wear readers. Like Valid. I do that. Twi- I'm 24 and I have to wear readers, you guys. It's it, it's not Yeah, great. but you're getting your master's. You're supposed to wear glasses and look scholarly. I look like <laughs> a freaking nerd. If I wasn't already a nerd before, like with the glasses, I'm definitely a nerd. So whatever. Nerds rise up. Let's go. Aw, a cute nerd. 
Oh, yeah, my cute nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel bad about your cataract, so I'm just trying to make you feel uh-huh. better. Well, you know, <laughs> I'll take the green thumb over my eyesight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, yeah. So I don't have a green thumb. I have to work a lot harder for these things. I've put in a lot, especially for me. I have a, I'm one of those people when I'm not good at something, I'm like, eh, that's not for me. I'm not going to do that. But obviously you guys know, if you're listening to this, you know, plants are so rewarding and worth it. So, and also I do feel like Taryn, you're, you are selling yourself a little short here. Um, you have so many plants that all look so good. I think you just take it real hard when the couple that you have don't work out. <laughs> the <'Cause>... prettiest ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, guys, maybe this is a big thing to consider and think about this is that I don't, I don't typically buy a lot of like, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't typically buy like super exotic or um, super rare diva rare plants. Like it's just not something. So maybe I don't have a green thumb and I just haven't even like branched out unless except for the trio star and the calathea. That's like those are probably the most like rare and like hard quote hard plants to take care of that I have. Mm-hmm. So maybe I don't have a green thumb. I don't know. <laughs> I think you do. But anyway, <laughs> with all of the things we're saying about calatheas there are some that are slightly easier to take care of and a little bit more agreeable than others so we talked about the white fusion is an advanced level if you're an advanced level slash you just can provide a ton of humidity and attention then that might be the calathea for you and please send me a picture because i really fangirl over it yes but there are some others for example i have one right now a velvet calathea which is similar to the rattlesnake calathea, and then it has long, they la- I think they call it lance-shaped leaves. <laughs> um, and it's kind of wavy looking like the rattlesnake calathea, but it's solid green, a gorgeous, darker, solid green color. And then the very back of the leaves are velvety, and it's so soft. It's the coolest thing. I touch Ooh. that plant constantly. And Ooh, that sounds cool. Aside from, I did let it go a little too long without watering it one time and had to cut off a whole bunch of dead leaves that I, that which was a very clear, like, oops, my bad type of situation. It didn't leave me guessing. It was, I knew exactly what I had done wrong. And I cut all the dead leaves off and it's been totally fine ever since. Um, and I do have that one in my bathroom too, which does get pretty bright light, but obviously that's one of the more humid areas in my house. But I have other which I know we have a couple other uh, plants, obviously, on the list we're going to talk about, ferns being one of them. I have a couple ferns in the bathroom, and they are shriveling and dying so fast. So I don't think it really gets that much humidity, uh, which makes me think that the velvet calathea is a good example of one that is not as big of a diva. She's a little more hardy. And like Tate kind of talked about, she has a rattlesnake calathea, and I think that one might be more beginner-friendly-ish as well. Yeah, I can say that I've kind of left it, um, I don't ever let it get super dry, but there have been times here and there where I probably should have watered it sooner, and honestly, like, I haven't seen any browning, I haven't seen, like, the typical signs, it just kind of gets a little droopy, mm-hmm. then I water it, and, it's, and then it's fine, so. It seems to be a little more forgiving, like, she's a little mm-hmm. more understanding, I feel like. Yeah, maybe a little more down-to-earth, she's a little more down to Yes, <laughs> exactly. So the next one on our list is another one that everybody knows, probably everybody has tried. It hit the markets years ago. It's the real trendy right now, I feel like. I feel like it's coming out of the trendy. Or was it but was it trendy? It's the fiddle leaf fig. So a ficus larata or whatever. Um You sound like such a Texan. Larada. Larada. Ficus Larada. <laughs> larada. <laughs> So this is, you've seen it. If you don't know what it is, I promise you've seen it. So Google it and you'll know what we're talking about. It is, it can grow into a big giant tree. So it's a quote unquote fig tree. I don't think it produces fruit and it definitely wouldn't produce fruit inside in your house, but it is, it creates these giant paddle like leaves that are shaped. I don't know. How do you describe it? Almost like a guitar maybe i don't know <laughs> i don't know if that's a good description but yeah they're big they're they're pretty wide and um i'm trying to think of a shape i want to say they're pear shaped mm-hmm. but they're like really big it's got a unique shape there's not a lot of plants that have that same type of shape to their leaves and they're like we just said huge leaves and the thing too is like 
even small fiddly figs make huge leaves. Right. That's like the thing about them. I mean, I'm sure everyone everyone listening has probably seen one. If not, look it up. They're really cool looking. So they have really big leaves. That's they're like they definitely make a big impact in a statement. So that's obviously why I think they became so popular uh, with the rise of popularity. From what I understand, this was before I was really that into plants, and I would have never even. F- considered for one second spending really any money on plants because again grammy gave us so many (laughs) um but this plant got to the point of being i mean like hundreds of dollars just for not even that big of a plant because it became so popular if you go back and look through i'm sure ikea magazines from a couple years ago and many other home decor magazines and blogs and websites and whatever It was almost a staple. And they are gorgeous. They look really good when they look really good. However, they're super finicky. They need really, really high light conditions. They need a ton of light to be happy. And they need super consistent conditions to be happy. Or else they drop those leaves and then they look very... Uh, giving me very Charlie Brown Christmas tree vibes with you got like, I don't know, two or three leaves on this (laughs) big old scraggly brown branch. And they do not... You see so many more in real life that don't look good than do look good. I got one as a housewarming gift. Basically where I put it, it was summertime. So all summer long, it did good. I really didn't do much to... I mean, I watered it, obviously. But other than that, it looked happy. It looked good. It was putting out a little bit of new growth. So I wasn't really worried about it. And then as the days got shorter... And again, this was before I was really into plants and put any effort or work into it. Days got shorter. And then, I mean... Within maybe three weeks, the leaves were like dropping off like crazy. And it had, it was almost like a bush in that it had multiple uh, stems. And there were, by the end of probably, I don't know, six weeks, there were several stems that had no leaves on it. (laughs) It looked real funky. Dang. Yeah. So it was a really fast decline. And I really fought to keep it alive for a really long time. And it's, it was. One of those moments where it stayed the same for a super long time, which you know it's not doing good, but it's still there, so you're kind of hanging on. And then eventually it got so bad that I decided to chop it and prop it, and then it just died. So I remember that. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. But I will say, one day I was at H-E-B, which if you don't live in Texas, H-E-B is a grocery store, and I hate to be one of these people, but it's really the best. I just have to say I love H-E-B. Uh, I was at H-E-B, right? <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored, Texas, right? uh, Texas Backyard, <laughs> sponsor us, please. If I'm saying Facus La Rada, then you better know. But I was just happened to uh, notice they had a bunch that had a bunch of bird poop on them on sale for $4. Shut up. Three ninety eight. I'm not kidding. So I was like, wow. obviously I have to get one. And this was in it. I had just gotten a bunch of new plants and I was like, okay, Terry, we got to reel it in. Got to quit buying plants. But I mean, $4, even if it died in a couple of days, that's like buying a thing of carnations to stick on your kitchen table. So I had to do it. And I will say, I just kind of stuck it in my front room, which is where I get the most light. And it's been doing fine. It, I had a little bit of overwatering, which I think was residual from it being at the store because it was right when I got it. But since then, the newer leaves had gotten bigger and just I just noticed a couple days ago I think it's starting to give me the first new leaf since I got it Ooh, so yay my four dollar fiddly fig is actually doing okay so I'm hopeful that maybe the second time around with a little more experience I'll be able to do better yeah I've always wanted one they actually were uh, on sale at an H-E-B near me recently too but I just I think they were like twelve dollars though mm. and they were like um like medium size they weren't huge they weren't small Mm-hmm. I almost got one, but then I realized I was like, I don't know anything about fiddly figs, so <laughs> I didn't. Okay, the next plant on our list is a, I'm going to probably say this funky, so I'm sure there's a better way to say it, but Tillandsia, which is an air plant. These are the plants that don't have like roots, right? They're the ones that you just like, like, I, I don't know why, but I, see, I used to see huge ones at Kendra Scott. Yeah. And I don't even wear jewelry, but, like, when I would go with mom or whatever, we I would see the huge ones there, and I'd be like, how much is that? Like, 
Yeah, you're like, that's really where I want to spend my money. me with the earrings. (laughs) How much is that? LOL, when Tate said she was going to get her ears pierced for my wedding. Whoops. (laughs) Not that it mattered. She said that on her own. I wasn't pushing it and I didn't care at all. But anyways, these air plants really is the much more common term. Similar to Clathias, there's tons of different kinds, but they are plants that do not need soil. So you'll see them sitting in all kinds of really cool hangers and quote unquote planters they're not really in soil but they don't have I mean they do have a root system that will grow I think eventually especially if you mount it it's a type of plant that can be mounted onto something and it'll kind of cling on to it but they're so cool in that they don't have roots and it almost seems like they're fake you can just pick them up it's the weirdest thing really they're very cool didn't you have one Tate I I did and uh and oh boy so I had one it was doing really good um I would just I read that you were supposed to how you water them is you just like spray them with a sprayer like a little um what's the word I'm looking for spray bottle thank you yes a spray bottle but then I read online that you could also like soak them in water and then like like do that once every two weeks or whatever and then be fine so I was like okay let's try that method I'm gonna soak it in water and then I did and it just I mean like almost immediately just killed it like I don't know <laughs> what the heck was in the water up there when you I, drowned I, it yeah I, I literally like I, I felt so bad I was like <laughs> no, it happened so quickly like after I took it out like by the next day it was already shriveling up and like getting brown and I was like oh my god why did I dump it in the water what did I do wrong so uh, since then I have not tried again yeah. I've been like, uh uh-uh. I, I do want one again, but I just haven't. <laughs> so I am sure I had one or two at some point. That seems like they definitely have these at, you know, your grocery store or your you kind of see them around. So I feel like I've definitely had one before that I'm not really thinking of before I cared about plants really. But I recently got two of them. When we went plant shopping for Tate's birthday, I got one. And then I got one recently just at Lowe's or something. And I'm really enjoying them, honestly. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're doing good. I did. There was one, I think I went one time without watering it for too long. Does that make sense? I went too long without watering it. And the one that I really like, the one that came from that actual plant shop, has like a little brown spot on it now from where that little damage happened. But they're still bouncing back. And kind of like Tate was talking about, what I like about these, besides all the different really cool displays that you can do with them, is that they're vocal. And so you can kind of tell... After you've, it's it's totally adjusting to a new way of caring for a plant, which is why I wanted to put it on this high maintenance list because obviously with no soil, it doesn't fit into any of your watering schedule or your care schedule or your fertilizing schedule. You have to almost have your whole own, or it has to have its whole own schedule and care. Yeah. But honestly, and I will say it needs water more often. So I try to like multiple times a week go through and spray it all the way down. So I usually just soak mine I stand over the bathtub and like spray the crap out of it and then I shake it off pretty violently to get excess water off and then you're supposed to let it dry upside down but sometimes I forget to turn them back over and then the leaves get all misshapen so honestly I just kind of set it sideways in the little dish that I have it in and I'm really loving it I must admit but it's a totally different kind of work and I have to set very specific reminders because like I said I've gone one time without remembering because it doesn't really fit into any of my other plant care and I still see the damage (laughs) yeah air plants are really cool I like that you can just like put them on a shelf or something I mean depending on where you are in your space right every plant has their own needs but you know the fact that they don't need like a, a pot or soil I don't know it's just so cool it just is you can put it on a shelf or you can put it in these really cool spots so I really like them a lot too for sure the next one on our list is the very large category of ferns so the number one reason that ferns are tricky is because they need tons of humidity the second they don't get the high humidity that they need they get crispy they get crispy leaves yeah my fern right now is not doing too hot I don't know what kind of fern it is. It's, it's the the one that Grammy gave mm. us. It has flat leaves that kind of. It's definitely. It almost. It's like an asparagus like, fern. It's a kind yeah. of asparagus fern, though. It's like if you if you took, like a foxtail and then you p- pressed mm-hmm. it. Yes. That's what the leaves look yes. like. Yes. Like they're flat and they ha- are obvious. It's obviously a fern, but the leaves are like flat. Like if you had put it, pressed it for like a couple days. Yep. And, and then let it go. That's what it looks like normally. Yeah, that's a really good way to but describe it. But yeah, mine's it. struggling. 
Yeah. They just... They're so cool. I love them. Yes. They just need high humidity, and they will tell you really fast when they don't get what they want, and they do not bounce back. Like, once those leaves get crispy, they don't revive themselves like some other plants and some other leaves do and they can be so beautiful they can be these big gorgeous green flowing plants when you have them in the right conditions but in my opinion and in our experience it's really hard to keep the right conditions for them I recently bought one that I wanted to put inside of a jar to essentially do a little terrarium type of situation and start dabbling in those because those are so cool and it was uh, too big. <laughs> it just 100% sticks out of the <laughs> out of the little jar that I bought for it. And so it looked really cool at first, and it stayed okay for a while. And now it's getting crunchy. She crunchy. And I, you know, I try to remember to at least mist a little bit within the base of the plant. So at least if there's any new growth coming out, that it'll stay humid. But... Again, you guys know I struggle with humidity, so that's one of those that if you can get it right, it's going to be gorgeous, but it's tricky. Yep. Okay, the last one we have on this high-maintenance divas list is the alocasia or elephant's ear, which, hear me out, there's tons of different kinds of this plant, alocasias, and some of them are easy. So there's definitely some that are a lot more doable than others, but one that is super I guess you could say Instagrammable and super trendy and so, so cool looking is the Alocasia poly, which is a hybrid. I don't remember of what. I didn't write it down. So, oopsie, didn't do my homework. But it's it has black leaves and it has this insane leaf shape and insane veining, I guess you could say. It almost just looks like an outline. It's like a black leaf and it has a white outline to its shape. And it is the coolest looking thing to me. I bought one of these way back early in uh, plant quarantine life. Again, didn't really. This was pre-research. I just bought it because it looked really awesome. And I still absolutely love this plant. I'm a sucker for any black leaf, super, super dark leaved plant. Uh, But, oh my gosh, the humidity needs, once again, are super high. And another thing about alocasias is that they go into dormancy. So they'll die off and die back which is scary. So I had it for probably a month and a half total, but I would say the first two weeks, and I put it like in my bedroom right where I could see it right when I woke up. And (laughs) it was, this is when uh, we were teaching from home, fully remote. It was a a different world (laughs) at that point. So, you know, I could like wake up and admire it and appreciate it. And I truly did every single day because it's just so cool looking. I really, really love it. But damn, she picky. I even (laughs) got to the point that I moved her into the shower, like inside the shower, which where my shower is, there's light that comes in from a pretty bright window. So it's it's doable. I really want to get some cool suction cup things and hang plants in there, which is for another. That's beside the point. But I even put it in the shower, and I think maybe when I did that, it was just too late, and it fizzled and died. And now that I know more about it, I wish I would have saved the bulb or the roots or whatever and tried to kind of revive it. But at the time, I was like, well, and I just chucked it. Bye. Bye Bye-bye now. Yeah, I've never had one, but I love the way they look. My neighbors have huge elephant ears. Um, Well, not literally, like the plant. In their front yard, mm. and they look so yes. pretty. They have this in this huge, um, like flower pot too. It looks yes. so cool. I want to try to get some bulbs or do some in my front yard this year too. Where our front yard is, we get the afternoon sun, so it gets to the point in the summer here in Texas that is just. I mean, it's like one o feels like one o eight when it's in the direct afternoon sun for hours and hours. Yeah, it gets really hot. But I did notice some of my neighbors that had them this year, and so I was kind of watching to see in those late summer months how it went and they looked overall they looked pretty good got a little bit of you know brown edges but they looked pretty good so i think i want to try that this year it's on my list do you have anywhere in the shade you could plant them because i feel like i usually see them in the shade yeah i could definitely i have a that crepe myrtle unless we move it at some point that we could stick it under so it's still get lots of sun Mm -hmm. obviously but so yeah i may try that yeah that's a good idea because the ones that my neighbors have are in the shade like totally Mm. shaded but i guess it just as bright outside but they're big. That's my guess is that it's bright out. It gets enough sun to where it can grow, but it doesn't just absolutely get cooked out mm-hmm. there. So that's my guess. I don't have them, so I don't know. 
and I'm not about to go knocking on that door and <laughs> being like, so how do you um take care of your Yeah, tell me ear? about these elephant ears you have here. So the next little category we want to talk about, these are not so much the high-maintenance divas, but these are just the drama queens. These will bounce back. They forgive you. They come back to you, but they act like... It's the end of the world if you don't water them often enough. So very top of the list on this one is the peace lily. You guys know if you this she's a thirsty girl. She wants lots of water. If you forget to water her or if you go just a little too long, she will completely. And when I say completely, I mean completely wilt like all the way flat. It looks like they're, she's at the brink of no return, and you can find really cool time lapses out there. I don't have the technology at hand to do this, or else I would, but if you let them go completely flat, which you really shouldn't do that often, obviously, that's going to cause some stress on your plant at the end of the day if you do it over and over, but I've seen some really cool time lapses where they water them, and almost immediately, it's like, choo and they bounce right back up. Yeah, I've seen some cool. I've seen some cool. Ones and again, too. it's a hardy plant, so it bounces right back, and it's fine. But oh my gosh, drama! Always hitting us with the drama. I almost like the drama queens because at least they're like telling you, and you can see that they need something. I I struggle with plants that just mm-hmm. die with no warning. Yeah, Peace Lily has become one of my very favorites just because you guys know I'm an avid waterer, and she always wants water, so we get along pretty well. It's fun. It's all about finding the plants that work for you. Totally. And she's low light (laughs) loving, so that's always helpful, I feel like. Again, more forgiving. The next one on the list is a Fitonia. uh, Oh, a nerve plant. That's the more common name for it. This one, again, I feel like a lot of people have seen. They have these uh, really common at big box stores. They're around. I... Have had two now, and I've killed them both before I realized they were like this. Drama queens that once you water it, they'll bounce back. For whatever reason, I didn't realize that. And so they both kind of wilted and looked like they were going to die. So I was like, eh, threw them away. Oh, my God. No, you didn't. Yup. Sure did. You threw them away. Girl, was this was this in the beginning <laughs> of your plant journey? or? Well, the first one was. So, Okay. The second excusable. one, not as excusable. It was pretty recently, I must admit. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm stupid, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, I will admit, it was like a four ninety nine purchase at Lowe's. Not that $5 is nothing because it's definitely something and a plant is something. And uh, now I know and I won't do it again. Forgive me. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, my God. I know, stupid, but. Shame Shows. on you. And there's all, it's like, a, I don't know if, I mean, I'm sure it's always been a thing, but for some reason, maybe my phone's just been listening to me because we all know they do that. Uh, I've just seen a lot of the time lapses, same thing, where they're like all the way flat and then they water it and they go and perk right back up. Were you like, oh crap. Yeah. The first time I saw it, I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oopsie. Again, it was nice because these aren't the like high dollar, high maintenance. Like I didn't just drop $35 or whatever, which I know is not a lot to some, but I didn't drop a whole lot of money essentially on the plant. So I didn't feel horrible about it, but I was like, wow, I'm stupid. And it again, the second one was past the point. Like I definitely should have known or at least looked it up and I didn't. (laughs) It fell through the cracks a little bit, but it's because you have so many plants already. You were like, you know. Well, it's, I have, so I have it's like fine. a little spot that I put plants that need attention. And for whatever reason, I don't remember what was happening at the time. I was just really busy with work and life. And so I put it in that spot and it stayed there for a really long time. So then it just got even worse. And so then it just got to the point I was like, well, I don't think it's going to bounce back. RIP, honey. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. The next one we have on the list is a coleus. And I just recently acquired this from our plant cutting swap if you want to check that episode out go back and listen to our holiday plant exchange episode i think it's number five but i could be wrong probably should have written that down but uh tate gave me some of hers and i'm so excited to learn about it but tell us your experience my experience i mean coleus seems to be pretty easy um they are very like you know they'll speak to you They'll, they'll kind of wilt a little bit um i have multiple species of coleus and i'm not sure uh, which species they are particularly. Uh, I have one that just has plain green mm-hmm. leaves. And I have one, like the one the cutting that I gave you, which was the uh, one with the purple and mm-hmm. the pink on it. And they're very vocal. Like, they like... 
I think I have to water mine maybe once or twice a week. So, you know, they're, they're like a decent amount of water, but they're not, you know, super thirsty. You don't have to water them all the time. Like I imagine like Mm-hmm. a peace lily. And, uh, yeah, they're very vocal. They will wilt and look real bad, but then you water, they perk right back up. And that's what we love to see. Same kind of thing for the last couple we have on here, citronella plants, which Grammy gave us both a big old citronella plant to put out. I put mine outside at least on my patio to help with the bugs, obviously. Yeah, I had mine out there too. I'm sure most of us know citronella deters uh, mosquitoes and we have tons of mosquitoes here where we live. Or it's supposed to. Yeah. Um, and you just kind of, you rub your hands on it and then you kind of rub it or you take a leaf off and kind of rub it on your skin and it, it'll leave that oil and that essence on your skin and it's supposed to help with, uh, mosquitoes. I'm one of those people that mosquitoes really love me. You know, of course you're growing up, they tell you, oh, you must be sweet. <laughs> so I, that's what I'm going to go with, but mosquitoes love me. So I loved having it. It smells really nice. I think it's a pretty, it almost looks like parsley a little bit. So it's a big foliage plant, but she thirsty again. Yeah, same she is thing. thirsty. If you don't water it for like one day, a whole bunch of it will get yellow yeah. and crisp up. And this is a plant you can propagate, as well as the coleus. You can propagate them, like, if you just have a cutting, you put it in some water, and they will start to grow some roots. I have a bunch of my centronella right now in uh, water, ready to go, almost. All right, ready for yeah. summer, if you can keep it hanging on. Oh, yeah. Or spring, I guess I should say. <laughs> it was, like, summer? It's January? Yeah, spring. <laughs> spring is what I, I mean. Meant. Honestly, spring is what I... honestly, here, we have, like, one week of spring anyways, and then it's summer, so <laughs> you, right. you are far off. Um, I'm just wishful thinking yeah. over here. Another one that I like a lot is, and I just recently found out what it was. I'm pretty sure this is one one of the many plants that Grammy gave us. Like I, I want to mm-hmm. say she gave you one at one point, but I've had this thing for probably three years now, and um, I almost killed it because it it likes a decent amount of water. It's kind of like a coleus. I have to water it. You know, once or twice, maybe sometimes even three times a week, depending on how hot it is outside and how it is in the house. But this is a very drama queen. Like, she is vocal. She will wilt <laughs> down. But if you water it, she perks right back up. And she also, this is a flowering plant, too. It's a petunia. So she makes these really uh, pretty purple flowers that I actually finally got to see after the three years that I've had this plant. I Now that I have enough light where I live... There was enough for some flowers, so that was so cool. Um, and this is also another one that you can propagate. So one at one point in time, I went. I think we went on a trip or something, or I went out of town, and I was I watered it before I left, and I was just kind of hoping it would it could last until I got back. And when I got back, a lot of it had kind of died, and it was kind of like not a good. No! Yeah, it was really sad. I was like, oh my god. But I just cut it, propagated it, and then eventually replanted it, and it's doing great now. So it's very vocal. But honestly, not that hard if you just water it, you know, once or twice a week. The last one we have on our list is just a basic pothos. They, once again, like we've kind of said, these are just low-key drama queens. They will wilt and then they will bounce right back. I will say the neon pothos, which I've gotten recently, is a little bit more of a diva. That one's a little more high-key diva, in my opinion, Instead of wilting, like a lot of the other varieties, the green varieties, uh, this neon pothos is more of a yellow chartreuse color. Ooh. And when you don't water it, the leaves will brown. Ooh. So for pothos, it's a diva. And it's, they're pretty easy. Like most pothos, I feel like are pretty easy. It's just they're vocal, which is kind of nice. It's kind of nice too, as a beginner, to have a vocal plant that'll tell you, hey, I need water or something. It's fun to watch them perk back up. Another tip that I've heard on Plant Daddy Podcast, so I would highly recommend it. I love shout listening out. to their yep, shout out. Love listening to their podcast is putting some of those more vocal plants near plants that aren't so vocal. So when you see that wilt, you can it kind of is your visual cue to know, oh, I need to give this area some attention because I haven't watered that area. That is a good idea. It's especially helpful if you have a ton of plants. So. Wow. Great tips on Plant Daddy Podcast. <laughs> I know, right? That's that's some real experience, right? That there. is that play smarter, not harder. I'm sorry, work. Mm-hmm. That is that work harder, not smarter. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like play. <laughs> so some honorable, 
Oh my gosh. So some honorable mentions. We don't have any experience with these plants. And Tate, I don't know, you might have a little bit of experience, but I've never had any of these plants. But they are some that are definitely notoriously hard to care for. Um, Orchids across the board. Again, just have a very specific type of need. And unless you know what that type of need is, it's probably not going to be the most successful because it's not like a basic house plant that's super easy to care for. Obviously, it's a blooming plant. It's gorgeous. I see them all the time and appreciate them. But again, just kind of a different type of setup you would need. Like, I feel like caring for orchids is a whole hobby in in and of itself. Yeah, it's a subset. Yeah, it's definitely like there's, I feel like there are whole, like there are people that like only take care of orchids. It's like their hobby is orchids alone. (laughs) Yes. And that's the same thing can be said for the next couple we're going to mention carnivorous plants same exact kind of thing just requires a totally different approach to how to care for plants and is its whole own group of people who love these types of plants and know how to care for them an example if you don't know what we mean is like a venus flytrap we all know that's like the most basic example of a carnivorous plant but it's complicated and there's a lot of different kinds out there They're so cool, though. They're super cool. I love those. Something we don't know a whole lot about, but they're definitely out there and would fall under the category, in our opinion at least, of hard to care for, for basic people like us. (laughs) Another one, bonsai trees. Same type of thing. You've got to really put in some research to know how to care for them. Yeah. And then another one, which... Tate, you can tell me your thoughts on this, and again, have never had it, but the sensitive plant, quote, unquote but the mimosa pudica pudica which I'm one sure is I'm that saying again? that wrong it's the one it's like a little fern almost it looks like a little fern it's not a fern but it looks like a little fern and it's you touch the leaves and they close oh yeah 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 it's so cute i love cute. it we have i mean i don't know if, if we have the exact species that you're talking about or whatever but i know in texas we have some that grow out here i don't know if they're native or if they're invasive i'm not 100 percent sure but i know when i was little i used to go outside and i would like you know i'd always mess with them and they'd always close their little leaves oh my gosh i did not know that yeah that's so cool i have them uh, in my yard here really yep bro why are you holding out on me i want to go play with them all right well they're all dead right now but <laughs> i'm sure they'll come back i want to play smarter not harder yes that's the motto So that one, I mean, I guess maybe for us, it wouldn't be that hard to care for. Maybe they're not that hard to care for. And maybe I just am making assumptions. So uh, strike that one from the record. (laughs) Or maybe not. I don't know. You tell us. (laughs) If you're out there and you're listening and you know, you should tell us. Yeah. Tell us your experience. A random little fact, I guess. Not really a fact, but something I noticed when I was looking up. Obviously, I kind of made the list of plants that in my experience, I thought were divas drama queens uh but of course i wanted to do some supplemental research and kind of look into it and something i thought was kind of interesting was that the tradescantia was on almost every single list i found really yes and it all said because of the pruning like it grows too fast and you have to constantly be pinching it back and pruning it for it to look good interesting i didn't know that isn't that interesting and i guess i could see how that can kind of fall into the category but to me they're like the most prolific easy fast rooting for propagating oh yeah easiest thing in the world so i just thought that was an interesting thing as i was looking through some you know quick google search list like do you prune yours a lot well the one i had i really gave a full-blown haircut like a midlife crisis haircut (laughs) so it hasn't really i mean it's growing but I didn't do, you know, I haven't done like, okay, I have this nice, pretty bushy plant and it's getting a little leggy, cut it back, little leggy, cut it back. I really just went because I can't help myself with the propagation situation. So I cut it almost completely back. It only has a little bit. And it's, again, like I said, in my experience, and I'm sure yours too, it's a prolific, quick grower. Oh, yeah. So I don't really know. I haven't done a whole lot of just pruning little bits here and there, but it's a fast grower. So I guess if that's a problem for you... (laughs) Hey, send me your cuttings if you don't want them because honestly, I love it, but <laughs> got too many plants. Oh, I just no. thought that was interesting compared to really what we were talking about and what the rest of most of those types of lists were. It just seemed kind of weird that they had that on there. But just a thought if that's 
something you don't want, a fast growing plant, then A, what's wrong with you? Just kidding, not judging, but <laughs> B, maybe that's not the plant for not you. Not the one. It's not the play. Okay, so to make this episode a little bit more interesting, at least for us, Tate, I wanted to do a little, I guess, challenge. I Ooh. want to, so I took some of the plants from this list, and not all of them, but some of them from this list that we've been talking through, and I put them on just a little spinner, like a little wheel spinner thing. So I'm going to spin the wheel, and I want to see uh, what plant we land on and then I'm going to get one for both of us. So I'm going to get the exact same one from the same place at the same time and I want to see who can keep it looking good the longest. All right. Even Are though Are you sure you want to go against me? I do I know. have a green thumb. I know. As I'm <laughs> saying this out loud, I'm like now as this episode has transpi- transpired, I'm maybe second guessing, but hey, new plants can't go wrong. So I'm I still in. I will take any new plant. So I'm about it. Okay, so let me pull up my little And like I said earlier, maybe I just haven't been buying the plants that are hard. So I maybe have an inflated ego or something where I think I got a green (laughs) thumb, but really I just have easy plants. Who knows? I don't think you could have an inflated ego if you tried to. (laughs) I mean, really. Come on. (laughs) It's good that you're trying to be self-aware, but I think you're good, fam. Okay, so the plants we have up to bat... And these are just the general. Some of them are more general. So we'll get y'all's thoughts or listeners' thoughts if you have any. But I have on here Calathea, Fiddly Fig, Fern, Air Plant, Alocasia, and Orchid. Oh, my God. If we get Orchid, I am I know. <laughs> definitely going to lose. <laughs> yeah, I actually maybe am hoping for Orchid because I think Orchids can thrive in a semi-hydroponic, passive hydroponic situation, which oh, yeah. you know, I mess with and love. So that might be the only one I would win on. Spin the wheel. All right. Spinning the wheel. I turned the sound off because it was kind of annoying. So was that your spinning the wheel sound? That was. <laughs> oh, shoot, fam. You're not going to like this. No, it's we an didn't. orchid. No, we yes. didn't. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Taking bets. Taking all bets. Okay, yeah. Who's going to win? For those of you listening, we would love to hear, you know, who you think is going to do better with the orchids, Taryn or me. Even more than that. If you know orchids, tell us what we should get because I just put orchid and orchid can mean so many things and just going to keep it real. I do not have time to research all different kinds of orchids. So if you have thoughts. There's a ton of orchids (laughs) at my Lowe's that I go to. At my Lowe's. At my Lowe's. (laughs) At At the Lowe's near my house, there are so many orchids and I'm always so tempted, but I just know. I just know they're hard to take care of, but I guess we'll see. All right, so orchids we were the winner, see. so that'll be interesting. We will oh, check boy. in on this in a future episode and potentially multiple episodes and just kind of check in to see how that is going for us. So I'm going to get on that. I'm going to figure out where to get us an orchid, and then we can meet at some point, and I'll give you yours, and then game on, sis. <laughs> All right, game that, sis. Let's go. Game that, sis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has been so fun to record. I'm sure you can tell with the length of this episode, it's been a while since we've gotten to record. (laughs) So this has been fun. If you have any thoughts or experience on all the plants we've talked about, maybe you're a green thumb like Tate and you're like, what you talking about? That's so easy to care for. Or if you're like, yes, oh my gosh, same. Tell us. We need the moral support. (laughs) You'll make one of us feel better. So tell us your thoughts on any of these plants we talked about. Tell us your thoughts on if we missed any. I'm sure there are tons of plants that we didn't even mention that would have totally fit onto this list. And tell us if you're Team Taryn or Team Tate. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) Oh, shoot. It's on. That's so funny. I get really competitive. It's on. I shut down in competition, but I'm I'm game. I'm ready for it. I thought you were a dance teacher. I am. And Don't you go to competitions? We do, and I talk a lot about how it's for the experience, and it doesn't matter if you win, <laughs> because that's really how I feel, because dance is so subjective. Okay. It's true. It's true. And that's the tea. And that's the tea. Speaking of tea, our next episode... <laughs> I don't really know if that, really that works, but we're going to go with it. Our next episode, we're talking pests. And that just saying that makes me annoyed already because yuck and yikes. And once again, Tate, Team Tate has 
no issues with pests. Meanwhile, I seem to have. That's not true. I had my own little fruit, or not fruit fly, whatever gnat infestation, you know. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it next episode, <laughs> and we'll get into it. And we're just going to touch on different pests that are out there and kind of a general overall way to, or ways, I guess I should say, overall ways that you can prevent general pests and how to keep your plants overall healthy. We could talk about pests specifically for each one for a really long time, and maybe we'll do that in future episodes. But especially if you're somebody who's kind of just starting to get into the houseplant game, or if you're kind of like me and you acquired a lot of plants fast, and for whatever reason you thought you were invincible or you think you're invincible to pests and they haven't hit you yet, you're not invincible. But I promise the prevention is going to be much easier than the treatment. So we're going to talk all about that next episode. So check out that episode next week. If you have any secret weapons that you want to help us point out, we'd love to hear them as we prepare for that episode. Please share. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at PlantThatSis. Our Bare Bones website is PlantThatSis.com. And you can email us if you really want to at PlantThatSis at gmail.com. So thank you guys so, so much. We really appreciate it. And we can't wait to chat with you next week. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.